welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-23. Last time, our heroes found themselves magically transported into a glass globe with the ruins of Fitz Keep inside. With only Fargus Stathart knowing the legend, the information is very limited as to how these ruins came to be miniaturized in a Phoenix pawn shop. The group has opted to delve into the old stronghold in the hopes of finding a clue to getting themselves out of the globe. We return to the group as they move towards the old bridge spawning the moat. Well, that looks safe, muttered Cabe Silvertongue as the group reached the edge of the murky moat. The heavy oak timbers appeared to have seen better days, and the stability was clearly questionable. A brief discussion followed, and the group agreed that they would go by weight with the lightest moving first. The conclusion was that if Fargus, in his heavy armor, broke the bridge, they would all have to swim for it, as opposed to just him. Sister Elaine made the observation that the hemp rope could be tied to him in the event that he did fall in. Fargus was not amused by the weight jokes and made his displeasure known. Well, you're the tallest and wearing heavy armor, what did you expect? Was the swift retort from Lady Irena, the mage. His demeanor softened at the logic and agreed. Well, Be O'Toole skipped across the bridge without a care in the world until he got halfway over when he stopped and peered into the murky water below. The group grew concerned and Sister Elaine called out to him, asking if he had observed something. When the answer came back negative, the grumpy faces caused the small road to continue his crossing. Lady Irena, Cape Silvertongue, and Sister Elaine each followed with the old timber creaking with each successive traveler. The bard and the cleric each held on to one end of the hemp rope as the ranger gingerly stepped onto the old planks and began to move slowly over the bridge. Upon reaching the halfway point, only a minor amount of creaking was heard, and a smile crossed Fargus's face. Nothing to worry about, I guess. It's sturdier than it appears, he said. It was at this moment that a slimy green creature jettisoned itself out of the water and arced across the bridge. A giant frog attempted to jump between the ranger and his group, but was unaware of the rope connecting the two. Striking the hemp, the weight of the frog pulled the strand and sent Fargus, Cabe, and Elaine into the murky water. Bubbles appeared from the three adventurers, as did ripples from the amphibian who was turning around to attack the hapless swimmers. Sister Elaine and Cabe Silvertongue broke the top of the water first and observed the waves coming towards them. On the shore, Lady Irena and Welby were still in shock as to what happened. The bard yelled out, It's coming for us! just as his head was yanked under. Sister Elaine screamed and fumbled for her mace, smashing it to the top of the water, hoping that it wouldn't accidentally strike the bard. Moments passed and the cleric held her swing, just as Cave's head bobbed up from him, spitting out water and choking on the rancid fluid. As the pair attempted to spot their attacker, the frog resurfaced and its bulbous eyes were easily spotted. As the creature closed in on the twosome, a blob of white frost split between the two, followed by a familiar dagger. The frost bolt struck one eye, with the dagger hitting the other. The creature yowled in pain and spit out a grayish, sickly tongue encircling Sister Elaine. By this time, Cabe had obtained one of his weapons and slashed at the water's surface, aiming for the tongue. The blinded frog took a deep laceration to the face, but Cabe had missed his mark. The frog descended back into the moat, dragging the rapt cleric with it. The group yelled for the holy woman to no avail, and Cabe was smacking at the water, trying to get a hold of anything. A few moments later, the water turned a much darker shade, and Sister Elaine broke the surface, gasping for breath. Seconds later, the giant frog slowly rose to the surface, 
and floated limply along the top. Fargus soon broke out of the depths with his sword, one in the sewers. Slimy blood coated the blade, and the ranger had a broad smile on his face as the others watched in amazement. Bobbing along the waterline, the group watched as Fargus finally reached the shoreline and helped him out. Oh my god, you stink, remarked a wet sister Elaine as she and the others hoisted at the large human out. A scowl appeared on his face and he sarcastically remarked that she was welcome for killing the giant toad. I'm sorry if my aroma offends you, dear, but I was the one muckraking. She quickly apologized and thanked him for his heroic, heroic action. He stepped away from the group and shook like a dog, causing his associates to shake their heads in amusement. Once as dry as he could be, he moved into the lead position and went through the broken entrance to Fitz Key. Holding his sword at the ready, Sister Elaine stepped up and the group moved into the ruins in a two-by-two -two formation with Cabe Silvertongue bringing up the rear. Getting past the heavily damaged Barbican, piles of stone give the party the impression of a once great structure. A rusty portcullis sat at the back of the gatehouse and the party nimbly avoided the jagged rusty metal. Welby gave out a low whistle and remarked on the size of the fortress. Cabe pointed and began to speak when Lady Irena interrupted the group, yelling out. Refocusing, the party spotted a pair of jet black hounds racing towards them. Forming a semicircle, the group lowered themselves into a fighting position. As the pair of canines got closer, the group could clearly see red, beady eyes staring at them. One of the dogs lunged at Sister Elaine, who deftly sidestepped the creature and proceeded to smash it with her mace as it missed its mark. On the other side, the death dog opted to attack Fargus, but he lifted his male arm and the beast latched onto the metal, which it was unable to penetrate. He quickly conked it on its head, and the diminutive rogue peppered the foe with a series of quick jabbing dagger strikes. Two more punches from Fargus was enough to put the creature down for good. Once the dog's mistimed leap was accounted for, Lady Irena used her chill touch spell with the half-elf using a two-bladed attack against it. A stray claw, but did a blood drawing on the bard, but no one else had suffered any damage. As Sister Elaine used her weapon to perform the coup de grace, the group quickly scanned the area for more opponents, but found none. After a few more seconds, they each looked at each other, checking for injuries. Welby flipped his dagger up into the air and the group watched as they sailed into the leather sheaths around his waist. They weren't so tough, he smirked. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.